So uh, you have to throw my, uh, vi my, my screen up, uh, my, my slides up, though all it says is welcome. Um, I'm Dean Tribble. I'm uh, a CEO of Agoric. And if we can get my screen, uh, my slides tossed up on the screen, that'd be great. Of course, I distracted her with the video. So, um, so I'll just I'll just go ahead and start talking. Um, so, Agoric was founded in in 2018, and you know people ask when did we start? Uh, we either started uh, two years ago or 30 years ago, depending. I worked on the first production smart contract back in 1989. Mark Miller, our chief scientist, wrote the Agoric Open Systems papers that inspired a bunch of work. A bunch of the later work inspired IBC that you're familiar with for connecting um, uh, all, all of these cosmos zones. Um, Mike Jab. Tablon brought voice over IP when it was innovative from zero to $2 billion a year in revenue. So we have got an amazing team of us and, and, and uh, uh, you know, sort of 15 team members all together that have, that have worked in everything from small startups that got acquired to game-changing projects in large companies to standards efforts across um, web and large-scale distributed systems technologies. So we've been doing this stuff a long time and we brought this exciting stuff to blockchain because we're all about being able to bring disruptive technologies and products to market and not just small markets, but also out to, to, to larger mainstream markets. And we're backed by a wide set of investors and experts, our, our financial backers, of course, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, all, all of the investors you see, Electric Coin Company, Rockaway, Lemnus Cap, Polychain, our awesome advisors of Naval and Zuko and Zucky, um, who you just heard minutes before, um, and economists helping us do this. We're very excited to have them. They're very excited about our project. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So, you know, why are we here? We tackle large challenges. In this case, DeFi is, is sort of the exciting focus of what's going on, where it's very exciting. It's got massive opportunity for growth. It's obviously growing now, but there's, but there's um, three or four orders of magnitude out there for us to go after. And it's held back by structural problems. Everything from expensive gas fees and slow transaction costs, questionable finality, challenges of connecting systems, um, and so forth. It's held back sort of software structurally of, of, of how, you know, people are really excited about the composition you can get with that came out with like the uni token or people doing transactions across a couple of different um, uh, um, deployed DeFi contracts. But that's really baby steps from our perspective for composition. <clears throat> oh, I'm not in. Are you seeing me? Oh, good. All right. Um, so um, uh, that's really baby steps for competition that are exciting because they're so notable because they're so rare. But, you know, other systems out there that I'll talk about in a moment, they have vastly more composition. And as a result, they get exponential growth that's even faster than what we're seeing here. And they are limited by the kinds of challenges that, we're, that people are running into in terms of rapidly producing new DeFi. And then finally, of course, there's, there's security challenges where we're getting regular breaches, security experts design systems, and they get compromised shortly thereafter to the loss of millions for, for some of the investors, clients, customers, and so forth. And that's fine maybe as we're starting out, but as this stuff grows, it will become intolerable and unacceptable. And so that's the challenge where really, we really want to enable that next generation and, and, and achieve the opportunity, which is being the best place for development of DeFi going forward. And the simple way to think about that, that, that you know, a lot of developers out there kind of instantly get is Node.js for DeFi or React.js for DeFi. Why do they get that? And how, how do we accomplish that, right? Well, okay, we're built on a good, strong foundation of Tendermint chain. And of course, what we're building is a virtual machine running on a Tendermint chain and getting Tendermint speed and, and consensus security. And you know, yeah, Node.js, yeah, they built on a good, secure foundation. We, we, we allow you to build smart contracts in a secure version of JavaScript where you can use the off-the-shelf tools that the likes of Microsoft spent tens of millions or hundreds of millions of dollars building. You can use off-the-shelf processes and projects, right? And we have a security model that comes from the highest, the most secure operating systems in the world and, and built into familiar models of programming that are now available and familiar to, to, to millions of developers worldwide. And finally, and the most important thing that distinguishes Node.js or, or um, 
uh, React.js for rapidly putting together user interfaces is the composability model, where it's not, I can copy your software, but I can grab an off-the-shelf component. In the DeFi case, I can grab an auction or an over-the-counter trading engine or, a, or an AMM or one of those things and put it together with my application to build something new. And that's a really good start. But that's the build phase of what we want to do. We care about two parts. We also care about the earn phase, where it's not just that I built something, but I can get it out to a place that is of value to me and to my customers. And in the web case, yeah, that was just the web, and it already existed. Blockchain, we've got to do something different. Because these are DeFi, we need to be able to roll these things out in a place where there is a coherent model of pricing, where there is coherent money. And so we have built a chain that has DeFi elements integrated in all throughout the stack, where there is a capital economy at the bottom that stakers participate in, earning rewards for investment and securing and governance and so forth. And there is a consumer economy at the top that customers participate in, that our DeFi components are, are delivered to, our DeFi applications are there, and traders come in, uh, customers come in, um, you know, eventually mainstream users come in in order to buy, sell goods, NFTs, and so forth. And in that market, it starts with key economic institutions that we provide and that our partners provide, like the Treasury, which is a local currency, sort of you know, normal kind of vault uh, model, the, the AMM um, that is part of the system, and it's integrated in the system. So for example, the Treasury can automatically liquidate on it. They all participate in the, the scheduling and prioritization of execution and so forth. Right? And so, and, and the key element of this integrated economy, it gives us special places to stand to participate in the profits of the economy. So we end up with a model of execution that, that captures value based on the economic activity of all of those traders, of all of those businesses. Right? So that's where we're at. Where are we going? Right? That's what we do. Or sorry. To build this thing, to deploy this thing, it takes a lot of other stuff. So we have a whole lot of uh, partners that we're working with. We uh, um, worked with Interchain Foundation. They funded our work to, to, to work with others in the community on uh, uh, IBC, which you've heard about in several projects. And of course, we use in order to launch our chain connected to the outside world. We work with Zcash, MetaMask. We are, our technology is crucial to their next generation of extensible wallet that we're working with them to grow to support Cosmos and, of course, our chain. Chainlink will be our, our Oracle launch partner when we go out to mainnet um, and so forth. And we can talk about the use cases I'll talk about another day. We also have many validators. We already have 36 distinct validators that aren't us working on our non-incentivized chain as we've been rolling this out, as rolling out updates um, every couple of weeks or every month. And we have you know, select validators that are all committed to participating in our incentivized test net and rolling out into mainnet. And we're very excited about, about those, part, those validators. And we'll be growing that community, community. And indeed, that's one of the main things that I'm very excited about is growing our engineering community outside of Agoric Net. OK, so where we're at. We released an alpha. Plenty of people heard about that. We are working towards a beta, where the beta will roll right into the incentivized testnet to test out and drive and get experience and grow these novel elements that, that, that integrate economy into our chain and integrate rewards about the economy into securing the chain as well. And that will roll into mainnet uh, release later this year. OK. And my, there we go. So. Obviously, the next thing after this is the demo. So we want you to see some of these pieces. And what this is going to show is those initial economic abstractions that we used our tools and our smart contract framework to build those initial economic abstractions. They're built using our toolkit. They're built using reusable components. But the important thing is they provide an economy, an environment, a place where lots of other programs can build can work as well. Right? A key thing is, right, if you had staking derivatives by itself, that's exciting, but you need a place to trade it. You need other people to be able to make secondary markets on it and provide insurance and slashing defaults and all kinds of things that require a pluggable, rapidly growing economy on top of your favorite DeFi application. You've seen lots of examples, singleton DeFi applications, but the key is to make those easy to build so they can be in a place with lots of others that, to, to provide synergistic value. So this demonstration will include something you're, you're familiar with now, only be this day that this has become possible, where we can go take Ethereum, or sorry, Ether from Ethereum over 
um, across PEGI in this case, via transport in, uh, in IBC to the Agoric chain into a vault to produce stable coin that can then be spent in the market. And so we'll be showing those examples. So if you want to run that video now, that- Are we going to run the video? Let's run the video. Let's get that video going. Welcome to the Agoric Core HQ application. Uh, this is where I am going to create a vault to mint the local currency. So I'm going to use ETH A as my currency to uh, lock up. MetaMask is going to ask to connect. And now I'm going to configure my vault. So I'm going to choose how much MO, uh, the local currency that I want to receive, and I'll put in 5,000. And based on the exchange rate, I know that I need about seven ETH for that, and I don't have enough. So it's going to ask me to transfer my ETH from the Ethereum blockchain uh, through Peggy to Agoric. So I'm going to do a little more, hit transfer. Uh, it's going to ask MetaMask to connect for me. And because this first transaction is on the Ethereum blockchain, and then MetaMask would mediate the rest of the, the transactions. Two rate chain restarts later, uh, the transaction's gone through, and I create my vault. So I'm going to confirm that and hit create. And the app is going to ask for a confirmation in my wallet. So I've got an offer to receive 5,000 Mo in exchange for 7 point uh, something ETH. And you can see that right now I have zero Mo. Uh, Agoric structures its transactions as offers. So it's always a give and a want. So I'm gonna accept this. And uh, then you'll be able to see that I now have 5,000 Mo in my treasury Mo purse and a little bit fewer ETH in my treasury ETH purse. So I'm gonna take that Mo and I'm actually gonna create a leverage position here where I'm gonna go back and buy some additional uh, uh, treasury ETH A. Uh, so creating a leverage position on my ETH with some portion of the Mo that I uh, created. So uh, this is just a, a basic demonstration of the, the core Agoric Economy HQ applications. And with this local currency, a user can go in, um, use applications that are built both by Agoric and by third-party developers, uh, as our chain is a virtual machine chain. And so you see that I did an auto swap here. I spent 4,000 Mo and I got back some treasury ETH mm -hmm. that was based on, and the exchange rate there was based on the liquidity in the pool. And uh, with that, uh, that ends the demonstration. So Agoric is launching a smart contracting platform in JavaScript running on Tendermint this year. The core economy components shown in this demo will be available for third-party developers to import and build on top of. For developers, building on our chain is faster, more secure, and more accessible to a wider audience. And for users, bringing your ETH in is a breeze. Transactions are Tendermint fast, gas is cheap, and early users will share in staking and liquidity rewards and build the community with us. Thank you. Thank you, Roland. So that was something that, that I want to highlight there. That transaction triggered by MetaMask in order to create that vault was, you know, ETH from one chain to Peggy another chain to Goric a third chain into a vault to produce cash, nothing but net. It's Thank just you. awesome to wire all that together. So um, <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> is there more? Is there more? Yeah, there, there, is there, more. Is, there is so much more. Okay, a lot of this on, stuff you guys are going to Good question. Burn. Okay, you told us a lot. Was, this is like mind blowing. All right, like you got everything. If if today is the last day, the last thing we should remember from Agora, what is the one thing you do not want us to forget? Like, do not ever forget. This is the place, Agoric Chain is the place where developers will be able to best build and most quickly build new and exciting next generation of, of DeFi. And where do we come find you? Where do you, you want to come find me on this slide? Come, well, I threw I threw my COO under the bus. You can email him. You can obviously email me. I don't know come who Mike is. Who is this Mike? I'm confused. Mike, Mike Jablon is our COO and he gets shit done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so come so find us. Everybody should just spam Mike and say, Mike, we are in Agoric. That's Let right. us in. Absolutely. All right. Thank you very much, Dean. Awesome presentations. Thanks for wrapping it up for us. And we will see you in the Telegram. We'll see Mike in the Telegram as well. And you have a great team behind you. Special thanks to Santi, as well as Roland and Vanessa, your team. They've done great work. Thank you. Thank you all. all right. Thank you, community, for joining us. <laughs> see you.